we are going to talk about The Villager. You know that's a newspaper. Next on Village in Motion. Make the world go round. There ain't nothing in the world like a big eyed girl to make me act so funny. Make me spend my money. Make me feel real loose like a long neck goose. Like a girl. Oh, baby, that's what I like. What's that, baby? But. But. Hello, Greenspring. Today is, uh, let's see, what day is it? Tuesday, September 3rd. 2015. I'm Fran Duvall, your host for today, and I am, and I'm very happy to be here to discuss this wonderful paper we get every month, The Villager, and we have here with us two of the principals in that, Kathleen Henry, here uh, directly to my left, and Kay McCurdy, and um, hello both of you. Thank you. And now, you know, why don't you t just quickly tell us your role in The Villager? Kay and I are co-editors of The Villager. She makes it sound like it's 50-50, but she does the big half of the work. <laughs> not true, not true. Not true. <laughs> well, I, obviously, it is a cooperative yeah. effort. I like to say I get the first edit, and Kay has the last word. OK. In other words, she's going to blame me if anything goes wrong. Is that <laughs> <laughs> sounds good. Oh, it sounds like you have a great working <laughs> relationship. relationship. Yeah. Everybody do. knows where they are. <laughs> yeah. <We do. laughs> Yeah, and, and so I'm glad that you came on. You know, this is a busy time of the year. And uh, the publication, I think it's gotten bigger, hasn't it? L more pages? It definitely has. Uh, when Ben came, um, he was accustomed to writing a monthly column for uh, the newsletter uh, at the Houston facility. Uh -huh. And we wanted to, to have him write for us as well. Uh -huh. But we were a little concerned about whether we would have room enough for er all the other news. Mm -hmm. And so after we talked to him and we talked to Clint about it, and um, it was generally agreed that we would go to 16 pages. And Kathleen and I were a little apprehensive about whether mm -hmm. we could fill 16 pages. but. Somehow the material accommodates mm. us, and we are lucky if we can get it all in. Well, and especially when you're doing photographs, uh, that takes up space. It uh, does, yeah. and we have a wonderful photographer, Al Nielsen, right. is our staff photographer, and we have a lot of other residents who will send us pictures. Mm -hmm. um, Austin Murray has contributed, and Larry Leonard, and um, and oh, Mary Sue Garner is mm. a doll about helping us mm -hmm. out when we need someone to photograph something because Mary Sue is every place. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it, it does hope, take up space. I hope when residents are sitting at the dinner table with some of these folks you mentioned and yourselves, that they say thank you for the effort that you put out. This is no small task. I know that these kind of things, going back and forth to different people, it takes time, and you have to wait. You're, you're sometimes on their time schedule, yeah. not yours. We've noticed that. Yes. <laughs> and every now and then we have someone tell us that we should report on this or we should report on uh -huh. that. But the fact is we don't have reporters that we can yeah. send out to yeah. meetings. We rely on clubs to, to recruit one mm -hmm. of their own members to write up an activity. Uh -huh. Um, we do have some wonderful writers who are in every issue. Mm -hmm. um, Joe Lombard is a terrific mm -hmm. writer, mm -hmm. and she writes um, a lot about the, the arts. Right. And then Penny Scholl has covered right. our art wall for years now. She's wonderful. And she reviews the, the plays, the Greenspring right. Players productions. <coughs> She's um, wonderful with that. We have uh, Jules McCaller, who writes for the Republican meeting, and mm -hmm. Uh, Adrian Cannon, who does the same for the Democrats. Mm -hmm. So we're really very fortunate in the people who are willing to take on a, yeah. a, a permanent role, uh, so to speak. I can remember when I first, I've been here a lot of years, and I remember when I first came, uh, neighborhoods were assigned, or even buildings were actually assigned reporters that wrote for the... Uh, um, that's that's uh, right. Was we, that back in the Katie Kane days? It is. It is. We, yeah, yeah. You're yeah. exactly right. When Katie was there, yeah. Hmm. Greenspring started 15 years ago. Next month, 
isn't that, or pardon me, this month. Yeah. Um, and it, it started in September 2000 uh, because the staff had been writing a publication, a newsletter, mm -hmm. uh, but they stopped doing that after a while, and Marcia Date. You probably remember this, Hi, Fran. Uh, yeah. Marcia Date got a group of people together to talk about doing um, a publication right. that would be by residents and for residents. Mm -hmm. And um, it, that's when Katie Kane and John Goldsmith, who were mm -hmm. journalists in their previous lives uh, mm -hmm. for the Washington Post, when they came forward and, and started the right. then four-page Villager. Yeah. Oh my, <laughs> four page. <laughs> that sounds wonderful. Yeah, I can remember the the sisters, Helen and Helen Nguyen and her sister. No, uh, not Nguyen. Uh, Helen she, Reynolds. Yes, Reynolds. Of course. That's, Helen that's Reynolds. That's a, yeah, that they they were uh, like roving reporters oh. for their neighborhood or their yeah. building. Right. And I remember that. Um, that very first issue. Um, uh, Chuck Jekyll mm -hmm. and Helen Wynn and Helen Reynolds mm -hmm. and Georgia Weatherhead all contributed to that first issue. You still do, can we still see copies of that? It's online. online. That's right. I yeah. wanted to bring that up. Thank you. Yeah. Through the Village Bridge. Yeah. We're very fortunate that the Village Bridge not only maintains our archives, so it goes right back to the very first uh -huh. issue, and we, we're very grateful to them for that. Now, um, tell people how they can access the Village Bridge. I know they ought to know, but uh, tell them how to access it on their computer. Well, it's www.villagebridge. The Village Bridge. The, the, the yeah, Village me, Bridge. The okay. Villi village okay. Bridge, right. And uh, you need your login and your password, mm -hmm. which I hope everybody knows by uh -huh. now, since we all have the same login and the same <laughs> pas well, password. Well, say what they, you know what they are offhand. Get, um, since this is available on YouTube, maybe yeah. we should uh, just say that if you need to get your uh, the user ID and the password, ask at the dining room table because there's a good chance that somebody, somebody there sitting there, there yeah. the computer club and if you're, you're But it is amusing near, how it's so secretive when it's... If you're anywhere near really Joanne isn't. Madison and Oh, Michelle. yes, Joanne yes. Madison. She does a good job. <laughs> and and um, um, there is a Village Bridge um, email address that you can write to to get mm -hmm. that information by mm -hmm. email, and that will be in the... Um, or that was in the August issue of the Villagers. Good. So if you still have that copy around, you'll, you'll okay. get to find it. That's always yeah. helpful. And, and you do put it in every issue, I believe, don't you? It, um, I, in, in many issues. Yeah. Uh, if, the, if the staff isn't too wordy. <laughs> <laughs> and once you get past your login, et cetera, then their homepage pops right up. Right. And it's just full of information. Yeah. And we are down on, what, the lower left-hand right. uh, okay. page. Yeah. Click on the villager. And there's and, the current issue yes, is that's there, nice. so all you have to do is click on and it. And it's all it's in color too. Oh, which with is all due really modesty, nice. we are beautiful in color. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well let's let's print yeah. that. Okay. Oh, yeah. We you have printed an out earlier one. issue of the villager, the July issue, uh -huh. here in color. And for contrast, here is the same issue in black and white, but it's not quite as effective. The one that we're looking at is in color and very effective. Yeah, I agree. I agree. It's we used to be able to put the front and back in color in some issues, but we found that uh, we were told that it was jamming up the copy machines to do it that way. So we had to go back to having every issue in black and white. Now, tell me how this gets paid for. Is, is it just in an administrative budget? Uh, That's right. It comes out of Ben's budget. Okay. Um, and we're very grateful. Uh, uh -huh. to them for having allowed us to expand it. Um, yeah. they, as far as I could tell, Ben didn't bat an eye when we said we wanted to go. Mm -hmm. Well, first we went, um, it, I should back up a little bit. Kathleen and I started our current jobs as co-editors in early 2013. And at that point, it was an eight-page issue. Uh, okay. um, then before long, we found that we had enough material to warrant expanding it to 12. Mm -hmm. You have to do it by issues by fours. of four, yeah. yeah, for the copy center. Right. Um, and then after Ben came and we added still another column, we expanded to 16 pages. Right. So out there, lo looking at this program, people are saying, well, you know, our group would like to have a st an article in there. 
Um, how do they go about it? Oh, we'd be glad to have them, Absolutely. would we not? Yes. <laughs> okay, they can get in touch with either Kay or myself, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll tell them uh, the guidelines. We will send them the guidelines, uh -huh. number of words, and if you want to uh, have a photo with it, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Nothing too stringent, nothing that would uh, right. restrict your creativity. Right. And uh, then you uh, send it to us, and it's on its way. But okay. yes, we certainly you welcome know, that. I'm sure that people uh, read it and say, oh, well, my group probably doesn't need, that's only a small group or that's, you know, it wouldn't be interesting to the whole community, oh, you know? I beg to differ with that. It's amazing. Uh, we residents are interested in what other residents are, are doing. Right, right. right. Sometimes we only find out what residents are active in uh, in the obituaries. obituaries. And it's so sad. I, I, I hate that. Yeah. That's a good point. Yes. So so beat the obit writer and, right. get, and get it in the <laughs> or villager. Or do a practice obit <laughs> oh my and, and have it in the villager. Yeah. Mm, that would be our, different. Uh, we mentioned uh, sending it to us or getting in touch with us, uh -huh. and our emails are on the back page of every villager. And they're, yes. and they're uh, of course, they're cubbies. If, uh, I guess you'd really rather have it online, would you not? Uh, that's more convenient. Uh, eliminates the first step. But if it's handwritten... But we'll as deal. we know, there are people here who yes. don't use their computers. Don't in let that, that way. be an obstacle. We will deal okay. with handwritten. So you heard it here. Don't let that be an obstacle, because we really are interested in every group and what they're doing. And and I know one of these um, things they did over at uh, Hunter's Crossing where they had all the different clubs. What is that event called? The, the village, village fair. Yeah, the mm -hmm. village fair. And and I, it was the first time I knew we had a sci-fi. Mm -hmm. uh, group here that they love sci-fi movies and yeah. all that stuff and I had I never heard of them before Same. here they had a table set up <laughs> upstairs in the okay. card room well, and they... I sat and talked to them a while I, I thought I mean I'm not, not a big fan of sci-fi but but I was so interested and here's a group I never heard of See? you know and if one of their members would write up an article then the whole community would know of their existence and right. they might get more members yeah. uh, Exactly, and and we want people not to uh, to be hesitant because they think they're not good writers. Um, <clears throat> if you send us an article and we think maybe it it doesn't read quite as smoothly as it mm -hmm. might, well, that's where Kathleen that's comes your in. Editorial that's thing. Yeah. It, it, after all, we like to feel like we're really editors now, yeah. and then, so they're doing <laughs> us a favor by yeah. making us feel useful, right, right. Kathleen? Absolutely, and if there's uh, something that we uh, isn't clear to us and we feel won't be clear to our readers, then we get back in touch. Mm -hmm. Or if there's something maybe that's important to them that we'll need to leave out for space reasons, we'll get back in touch. But in the large majority, we tidy up uh, uh, here and there, make it consistent with uh, our overall uh, paper, mm -hmm. and uh, that's it. I think that's, I, I hope we begin to see some new groups or new uh, new kind of uh, coverage of various uh, aspects of our life here at Greenspring. Every now and then, Kathleen or I will be having dinner with someone, and they'll mention a group that they're part uh -huh. of, and we try to recruit a story. Yeah, good. But, oh, we do. But people should not wait for us to ask them for the story. <laughs> no, we can only eat so many places. <laughs> <laughs> and there are over 200 clubs on campus. That's yeah. a lot of articles. Right. We yeah, could keep right. going for quite a while. Did either of you have a, a publication background? I was a proofreader for the Pitt News uh, back, well, we won't bother to wear back to, but uh, that was, uh, and of course I was an, an elementary Pittsburgh. teacher. You're right. Okay. That was a college paper? Yes. Okay. And I wrote um, regulatory affairs bulletins out to blood centers. That has very little to do with the villager, but, but you do, whenever you write something that's going out for a big group like the American Red Cross in this uh -uh. case, it goes through a lot of hands and people correct you and you learn mm -hmm. a lot by yeah. what other people know and what they point out to you. Yeah. It was a great experience and not bad, although 
when I first volunteered to Katie Kane back in 2003. I was sitting here thinking, you're going to bring up Katie Kane. <laughs> <laughs> I, I adored Katie Kane. I did too. Katie Kane was the founding editor, one of the two founding editors of The Villager, as we said. And she was a case. She was a, a, a rather crotchety person who, um, Fran and I have agreed, she was yeah. an acquired taste. But once you, I liked her very much. Once you got to know her, you absolutely adored her. But, but that my first meeting with her, where I volunteered to write for The Villager, she said, I don't have time to teach you how to write. You know, oh my. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> that was typical, Katie. So yeah. Okay. You we have don't, to be persistent. We do not have that attitude. No, uh, no, 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 no. We welcome writers. <laughs> the first time I really met her face to face, it was at her cubby. I was putting in probably Democratic Club flyers or something, and I was putting one in Katie Kane's uh, thing, and she... This woman was standing there. I didn't know who she was. She spins around and she grabs a paper. And she, what are you putting in my cubby? And I said, oh, you are Katie Kane. She said, yes, I am. I said, you intimidate the H out of me. <laughs> I said, and, she, and she immediately got soft. You yeah. know, she said, oh, please. She didn't mean no, to, no, to do that. No, but she just had that manner about her that, you know, it's like, oh, my gosh, I don't want to do any sidestep around Katie. I fell in love with Katie when we were walking down the hall together after a meeting. And in the music room was one of the dining room servers mm -hmm. playing the piano and uh -huh. playing beautifully. She stopped dead and then went in and sat mm -hmm. on the bench beside him. And after he finished, she asked him uh, where he studied and what his career plans were. And she was so kind and so uh -huh. good to him. And I later learned that she really did have a very soft spot for the young people yeah, here yeah, on campus. Yeah. But you had to fall in love with her, anyone yeah. who could be that kind. Yeah. Well, sorry that we kind of diverted to sorry, Katie Kane. Apologize. And many of you here don't know her, <laughs> wouldn't have known her, because she's left us. But, but uh, people at Greenspring are carried on in our memories, don't you think? Yeah, I mean, really, we yeah. enjoy looking back. Well, this is where we reinvent ourselves anyway. You know? It is. You know, that's what I, I, what I try to tell newcomers, that we... It, oh, it's good, you know, here because you get to reinvent yourself. You know? That's right. Who's to know what you ever did before? Or know? even care for the most <laughs> or part. Or care, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Okay. It's a very, um, there's so many people here who've had interesting jobs, and I don't know whether there's a, a place in the villager for that kind of biography or not. I mean, we think of that as sort of a memories thing, yes. but. I think it's also mm -hmm. current. Well, yeah. I think the book of us. Uh, well, that also that could role. do it. Yes, right. of course, yeah. of course. And uh, we have to be mindful of the slippery slope concept. Uh, we'll yeah. get articles every once mm -hmm. in a while. So and so's grand, <coughs> excuse me, grandchild has done this and that. Well, everybody has a grandchild who has done this or right. that, and we right. can't start. Because yeah, it we, would open a floodgate, probably. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so. Something like that that I had thought would be fun would be the famous people that we've met. You know, um, John Goldsmith, um, one of the two founding editors, mm -hmm. lived across the street from Wilbur Wright. Oh, my. Oh. Can, no, could. Wilbur or Orville, which one survived <laughs> longest? The, I don't the, know. Or, I think <laughs> it was actually Orville Wright in Dayton, Ohio. Now, wouldn't that be a fun little one-liner yeah, for the villager? Yeah. I mean, it would have been back yeah, then. Yeah. And there are people here now who had similar touches with uh -huh. history. Yeah. It would yeah. be fun. Yeah. But again, as she says, it's a slippery slope. Yeah. Um, if someone thinks that their next-door neighbor was an incredibly important person and wants to be included mm -hmm. in that little column, <coughs> they could be very offended that you didn't agree with them. <laughs> We do yeah. our best. Yes. Well, I, okay. there's one thing I think you could start putting in the villager. And what did, would that be? A crossword puzzle. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> if we had the space. Now, I'm a Numbrix kind of gal myself. Okay. Well, and I, that, I could Sudoku. do some of that. 
Uh, but uh, now, Lyle, you know, your friend Lyle, yes. she does crossword puzzles. She writes. She makes them. She them. does them. And I think construction we should mention Lyle because Lyle used to do the layout for the villager. Oh, okay. And it was Lyle. It, it, she's an artist, yeah. a fine artist. And she created our masthead. Right? Yeah. That's right. right. I knew she'd done that. Mm -hmm. I, yes, you're right. We should have mentioned her. Yes. Yeah. I remember when that came out. It was... Because up until then, it, it um, I forget what the head, the masthead it, looked like. It was not polished. Okay. <laughs> the, this looks like the that newsletter for Green Springs yeah. should look. Yeah, it's really effective, and it looks great in color. Yeah. It does. <laughs> <laughs> we found okay. out, by the way, that a page in color costs ten times as much well, as a page in black and white. Yeah. So. We can understand the exactly why it's not in color for everyone. Exactly, everything. and we do have more and more residents all the time that are able to look at it online mm -hmm. uh, in color. Just like we have more residents all the time who are able to uh, change their voting address and mm -hmm. that sort of thing online. Going to put me out of business within an, hey another decade or two. <laughs> but in the meantime, I have plenty to uh, plenty to do. And if I can say another word about elections. Uh, to uh, this upcoming month, we will have a little box that will tell just the basic things, uh, the last day for registration, the last mm -hmm. day for absentee ballot uh, requests, etc. And that will be for August. For September, we will be talking uh, more uh, what the ballot will look like, uh, the candidates. Uh, it's a very long ballot this time. Mm -hmm. It's all local, but there are a lot. When you get down to the soil and water folk, and there's uh, <laughs> seven of How them, I believe. for that? Seven. seven. Uh, you know that you've yeah. uh, got a long list, but we don't like our residents to have any surprises. I know they like to be well informed mm -hmm. uh, ahead of time, and so that's uh, one of the jobs I'm pleased to, to yeah. take on. Yeah, it's, uh, uh, it's go very ahead. useful to have the co-editor of the Villager be the registrar for Greensboro elections. Agree. I agree. I couldn't that agree work more. nicely. Well, and 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 that's a good time to plug. Uh, that anybody that does need uh, to change their voting address, et cetera, All they have contact to do is call Kathleen. Me. Yes. Kathleen Henry. She's in the book. That's right. And she's on the back of the villager. And she's on the back <laughs> of the villager. Okay. Uh, so that's, that's really good. Um, now, wait a minute. I, I had a question. It was about the elections. Oh, and, and we're not concerned about party at, at this election. Am I correct? I mean, it's not like a Democratic oh. anything or a Republican anything. Uh, no. Uh, there were primary elections in many of the precincts yeah. around us. Yeah, ours didn't have but any. But ours yeah. did not have one, no. So our next election will be November 3rd, and it will be the general election. Mm -hmm. It will be called a general and special election. The reason it's a called a special election is several of the people on there uh, will be uh, asking for your vote to complete uh, terms that uh, their predecessors uh, okay. did not okay. fulfill. Yeah. Okay. But for the most part, general election. And does the villager... Uh, you don't print a ballot, do you? I can't remember. Uh, we have no, we have not printed a ballot, but we'll have everything listed that will uh, yeah. be. Uh, on and the I ballot. bet you you'll be on Channel Six. Uh, uh, yes, uh, have a spot to remind people yeah. of various things. People have said uh, to me, "Well, I knew that our precinct wouldn't had wouldn't be involved because you weren't on TV telling us about <laughs> it." I love it. That's great. Yeah. Well, and I think that. It's, it's really nice that we have our own precinct. We have residents who are the volunteer um, uh, officers, officers uh, yes. of the election. And anybody new that, you know, decides they want to do this, they need to talk to the uh, Fairfax County Electoral Board. Yes. Um, and we had several new people just last time. Mm -hmm. Uh, that uh, new residents that yes. took over. It's nice when we can have an all resident or an almost all all resident yeah. crew, but yeah, can't always do that. No, we can't. It's hard to get a chief and an assistant chief. Uh, that's a, an enormous responsibility, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it involves driving around at night and right. things that we're not that fond of doing. And yeah. so uh, that's. But the, first the county thing. really depends on our precinct. 
Oh my goodness! It, it raises their uh, their levels, their numbers way up. <laughs> yes, and yeah. we'll be sure to put the numbers in the villager after the election. Oh yeah. so yes, so people can absolutely <laughs> yeah. yes, and the percentages because our percentages are just so outstanding that we always have the highest percentage of registered voters who actually participate <laughs> in so, all of Fairfax County and most often in the state. Yeah. So the upshot is, watch your villager for, yeah, for the really months to important. come. You'll learn a lot about the elections in both before mm -hmm. and after. And sometimes even if you've gone to some of the meetings that are outlined in your, uh, in your uh, publication, you see something in there that, well, I didn't hear that in the meeting, you know, because maybe you got distracted or whatever. But when you see something in writing, yes. it often makes a different impression than hearing it. Yeah. And, and I think that's the big contribution of the villager yeah. is to have it in writing, to be able to go back and yeah. look through it and, yeah. and find it again. We have about a minute, ladies. Oh. Uh, you were worried about filling this yes, many minutes? Yes, uh, not a problem. We're, uh, so do you have any closing you know, that you want to say? We want to thank everybody who works on the villager. Uh, not only the writers, but the reviewers who keep us from having mm -hmm. a typographical error or a mm -hmm. name wrong at the end. Um, and encourage people to, once in a while, contribute an article. Mm -hmm. We'll help you get it written if that's the problem. Mm -hmm. But we look forward to hearing from residents about what they're up to. Thank you both for coming. Our pleasure. And Thank you, Fran. Let me give you some announcements. Uh, today... At 2 and 8, we will have the August Resident Council meeting. Uh, tomorrow, Friday, on Village of Motion, there will be a segment on hiking the Appalachian Trail. And, of course, we never want to forget our Green Spring Troubadour that comes on at the end of the show. Over the weekend, the Village of Motion does replays on Saturday and Sunday at 9.30 and 12.30, or 2.12.30, I guess. Thank you very much for coming today, and we'll see you next time.